So this Rimworld race, the Folians popped up in the Steam Workshop, and let's just say they're very strong. So strong, in fact, that I've cranked the threat scale up to 1000%, and I did a test run on this and survived till day 11. And here seeing Lord of the Hunt sent his werewolf invasion and we just weren't really ready. This time around though, we should be more ready as I've been a bit more picky with the island sea that we've chosen. We've got a fairly defensible map. And this time around, our adventures are backed by a sponsor. War Planet Online is a free to download military real-time MMO strategy game, which is available on mobile and PC. And if you log into the game between now and November 1st, you can craft a limited edition gear set or win a T-1000, T-800, and Seracon avatar, which won't be available afterwards. You can play with and against players from all over the world and fight merciless terminators to stop Judgment Day. Your decisions will help the resistance in the war against the machines and possibly save the world. Build and defend your base to create an unbeatable army and fight with your faction to stop Judgment Day by playing in special events with the Terminator storyline and you can win some amazing limited edition gifts like the T-800 Terminator headbox. You just gotta log in between now and November 1st for a chance to win, so what are you waiting for? Install Warplay online right now with the link in the description. So we got three plants. Our Potatoid Timmy works really fast at 500% increased global work speed. As far as his skills, I started him with zero in all of his skills except for he's getting bonuses from his childhood slash adulthood. His childhood actually doesn't give him anything. His adulthood gives him five planting, three medical. Coordinate also gives him some skill bonuses and increases global work speed. Groundbreaker increases construction and mining by four and Fast Hands increases global work speed. The only thing I've altered here is the passions. Like he has a burning passion for construction, compulsion to mine. And when he does planting, his rest drops at 50% normal speed. Also one thing I forgot to mention is that these things are pretty dumb and they only learn at 40% rate. So that's kind of their drawback if you will which is not so bad considering their 500% global work speed. In just three hours here's how our wood supply is looking. We got how much is that like 800 wood? Plus over here to the west there's the ruins and we're just going to start deconstructing this whole thing for a bunch of sandstone blocks that we can use to build with. And doing this in some cases is increasing our map's wealth slightly by like 60 when we deconstructed that sculpture. But that's just because the blocks are worth more than the sculpture I guess. The runes itself is counting towards our map's wealth and I'm going to be talking a lot about wealth in this run because when you're playing on 1000% threat, things can kind of spiral out of control really fast. The game began at 6am and it's currently noon so we've been working for 6 hours and we're getting raided at 6am every day. So we still have 18 hours to prepare for our first raid and I'm going to make a maze around this swamp area which is pretty hard to move through. You only move at 30% speed while walking through it. And since we don't have any weapons yet for day 1, we're pretty much forced to use spike traps. And speaking of traps, I do not want this iguana to walk over a trap. So we're going to have Toad attack it. And Toad is our fighter death cap, who I only gave two traits. Tough, lowers incoming damage by 50%, and very enduring increases pain shock threshold and lowers mental break by 20%. He's only getting bonuses from his dull hood being military death cap, gives him four shooting, four melee, and there were no good childhoods for the death cap. The reason why I only gave him two traits is because I made him immortal, and I considered that being kind of like his third trait. And from what I understand about immortality is that if he does get killed, then he will come back after a set amount of time. He is lesser immortal, which is the lowest tier of it, so it will take a long time. And and yeah, the reason why I did this is because in my practice run, he died on like day five to a pretty nasty caster and there was no way to save him. And since I'm not really familiar with Kuru's Room Build of Magic and the, what is it, like 50 new classes they've added, I don't really know what casters to avoid. So to help limit test that, we're making Toad Immortal. It's 11 p.m. So we got, what, seven hours till we're getting raided and we're having Timmy remove all this flooring over here, which should also help manage our wealth a bit. And every time we remove one of these floors, it's lowering our map's wealth because they cost four blocks and we're only getting two from them. And we'll be using those blocks to kind of buffer up the defense a little bit, which I'd say is pretty much done. And with three hours left, we'll have Timmy set them up a bedroom. So here comes the first raid. Apparently these guys are clever and they will notice our traps, but I don't think they behave like sappers in a sense that they will actually try to avoid them by tunneling through our walls. Like I think they're actually just going to walk over them if that's the only way into our base. One thing I will say is there is quite a few of these dudes, so I'm not sure if we have enough traps set up. We're just going to hope that is the case. This guy actually is nimble by the looks of it. Yeah, he does only have a 10% chance to spring a trap, so it looks like Toad's going to have to do some fighting and the dude actually has 10 melee. Thankfully he is using a ranged weapon. Oh, he actually hit a trap. Very nice. Now he has a 10% chance. Okay, he actually hit it again. Crap, Toad is not getting hit and okay, very nice kill. Well played, Toad. Well played and we'll strip him and he did have some ammo and a kit that Toad can use. I'm trying out a new ammo mod with this playthrough and it is a bit finicky versus Yeo's ammunition. But basically every raider that has a ranged weapon will have kits and ammo with them. And I'm not really sure why these raiders are not running yet, by the way. This person's also nimble. But they're a miner, so they have a negative 1000% chance to spring a trap. I'm not sure if that's a class, but we're about to find out, I guess. Toad is going to... Holy crap. Hit a lot of shots by the looks of it. 
close the door or never mind they're dead so another reason why this race is kind of op and part of the reason why i've increased threat skill to a thousand percent is because these death caps get 1000 percent base shooting accuracy which doesn't actually mean that much when you only use a shooting skill of five but as he gets more shooting skill it's going to increase quite a bit and also for some reason these death caps have no aiming time i don't know why they're such good shooters but you know let's just say this mod is here for a good time not a long time at least until the mod creator decides to add some balance to it and again we are playing on a thousand percent threat skill so i hope it will balance out in that regard one thing also to note about these plant people is they do not care about butchering up humans and that's not from the ideology i've chosen nature primacy as our ideology and they don't like corpses like they don't like to look at them but they don't mind butchering them up for some reason day two's raid is here and since we now have a gun i've done a bit of a alteration to the base oh yeah we need to open this door when toad is doing that the raiders need to have a way to get to everyone or they rage out and attack our walls this dude hoosman is a wind mage so i think we're just gonna let him die to our traps and he did die to the first one the rest of these guys are not casters so i'd rather just use the industrial ammo on them or they can just die to traps that works too Every day we get a raid and a trader, and today's trader is a combat supplier who will buy the raider's weapons that they dropped. We'll sell everything except for this poor hatchet, which can be used to increase plant work speed. And I guess we'll sell the sawed-off shotgun and the machine pistol. The auto pistol they had, I think, is better. And these guys actually have a full durability machine pistol. I think we're just going to buy that. They did have a few nice weapons that I'd like to buy, but we just didn't have the silver for it. It's 3 a.m., and we're sending out Timmy to deconstruct some more runes. I thought I'd just show this because it's kind of cool to see him just deconstruct this stuff. And yeah, this is the first time I've ever gone through the hassle of deconstructing runes on the map mainly because we're playing on a thousand percent threats plus timmy just works so fast that he can do it in a matter of hours i had to hold off on that for now because the raid we're getting today is attacking immediately and they're by these elves which are very accurate on oh, this guy actually got knocked out and i was about to say the dude's not bad but he's got a seven damage brain scar which is going to lower pretty much everything he does by 70 percent i think like he's basically a vegetable so yeah we're not gonna try to recruit him we will strip him for his stuff though and he was actually wearing a lot of gear some decent stuff in here too like this chitin chest plate a value of 740. Timmy can't really wear it because it weighs the same as his total mass that he can carry. It weighs 12.5 kg and he can only carry 12.5 kg so he is not wearing that. So we've had MJ doing random research and we got our first tech magic high refining. With the mod everything we research is random and for some reason these folians start out really high tier with electricity, air conditioning, and nutrient paste already known. And on top of that to make this run more doable I've also given us microelectronics so we can make a comms console which I think I might start doing in all future runs and we'll get into like why that's so important in a bit we do have the ability to make a wind turbine though and generate our own power there's no reason to do it just yet and we still have to clear out like some marble over here and we have to clear out all these trees because they will block the wind turbine and we'll actually have timmy start doing that there's a lot of plants in the way so it's gonna take a while well it won't take them too long actually it's freaking timmy the turnip but yeah, i haven't really gotten over mj so she's the third plant that is really good at social too good in fact so i haven't actually really given her any social traits like very intelligent does give her a little bit of trade price and it gives her some negotiation ability but mainly it increases her research speed and gives her bonuses to medical and intellectual. Also, Priest makes it easier for her to convert others to our ideologion, and I haven't really gone over that, but I'll go over it later. Plus, Wise gives her bonuses to intellectual and increases her research speed and lowers mental break. And yeah, again, these plants are a bit overtuned with this third type of plant getting a 300% base negotiation ability, 900% base social impact, and 300% base trade price improvement, which you don't actually want to get this too high. Once you get it to, I believe it's 40%, you start getting worse prices for selling stuff you can buy stuff for cheaper though so it's kind of a double-edged sword in that regard the raiders we're getting today are preparing for a while before they attack and we're gonna have mj go out and try to hit up this bulk it's trader we finally have a trader that will suck up all the crap on our map which is amazing and yeah we have a ton of human meat to sell them that's gonna go bad soon and the plants actually don't mind eating that we'll also sell them all this fruit as it's really easy to come by all these leathers as well and that right there is 2k silver very nice if we go down a bit so let's keep the wood we can always make that in traps but yeah we have a bunch of tainted gear that they'll buy which is very nice nice no one wants to wear that a bunch of stuff that's actually not tainted as well if we scroll down further we got some more stuff to sell this chitin chest plate will sell for 568 very nice and then down here we got some more random crap that they'll buy and that's going to boost our silver count up to 4k okay this is not good i accidentally sold toad's kit so we actually don't have anything to shoot these death claws with and i don't know how strong they are we're about to find out he hits three traps and he goes down it looks like these things have double the hp on their body parts with a value of 1k so it looks like the mod creator does not know how to balance a mod which is not something that's new that's fine though some of them are fleeing by the looks of it this guy also went down some of them are not though is the only thing oh god they're in this person is a caster but they're a spell thief so i'm hoping oh god toad knock him out hopefully oh god they made it in this is bad 
Okay, Timmy just back off. And we knocked this guy out actually. We gave him toxic buildup, Toad, good job. And Toad is 11 hours left. And he knocked this dude out too. Well, well played Toad, he only has seven hours left now. We're gonna have MJ come out and capture these things and we're gonna have Timmy just save Toad. Not that he would have died off of this, like he is immortal, but yeah, that's part of the reason why I wasn't too worried about it. I'm not sure if we actually wanna keep any of these things, although this dude Salamander is a spell thief, which gets bonuses to melee and he has a burning passion for melee. If we do recruit a caster though, we're gonna have to increase our threat scale by 100%. Plus I'm thinking like maybe another 20 for death claws cause their thousand market value is just not balanced, I guess. But then again, these plant people are not balanced either so i don't know it looks like this dude got back up and there he goes he's down again if we do save these things we might be able to sell them off to Rimdeed or their faction with the mod i'm not sure if those mods are still working it's been a while since i've kind of been at this tier but yeah we saved salamander he's gonna survive toad is also gonna be okay and he has 10 times healing rate i don't know if i've gone over that but as if death caps didn't have enough bonuses they get that extra bonus as well and yeah it looks like we're gonna be able to first aid these things up their wounds might get infected because using first aid lowers the 10 quality but increase the 10 speed but yeah by the looks of it we are gonna be able to save them all so we're getting a poaching events and oh we're getting attacked by the same people again by the way but yeah we got a random poaching event right before we got raided and it looks like these raiders are hopefully gonna attack the poachers this person actually is a god helmet this is the only race that i've seen spawn in with god stuff and wait are they not gonna okay then maybe they're not gonna go for these guys because these revians should be attacking them but very nice all these leatherback turtles are manhunting because they're trying to poach one and then... Wait, they're attacking each other. So these guys are hostile with each other. That's cool because this Revian who does have a death acidifier, if they do end up getting knocked out and not killed, they will drop this god helmet um, on this other Revian got knocked out. They have a bunch of excellent gear that we could take. I can't really watch that though because meanwhile in our main base, I forgot to seal it back off. And hopefully we don't destroy this wind turbine. Oh god, what is that? Oof. It's a caster of some sort. We're about to destroy this wind turbine. Yikes, they're casting nothing really on Toad. Too bad, by the looks of it. <laughs> what is that sound? Okay, yeah, this is just kind of a mess. There's a lot of things I want to do right now. Mainly, I want to sell these things off. And I'm just kind of falling behind on that goal. Mainly, we got to connect this wind turbine to this comms console. And it looks like Rimdy is actually working, which is not up on the Steam Workshop page right now. I'm not sure when that's going to be back up. With Rimdy, though, we can trade these guys off for not that much because they're injured. And they do have some equipment on, but I don't care about it right now. There's too much going on. So, yeah, we want to get rid of those guys. And we're going to keep Salamander, the Spell Thief. Meanwhile, to the north, what is going on up here? So, just chaos. Like, this is an insane amount of action that just went down and okay these leatherback turtles are still manhunting did the person with the god helmet yeah she did actually get knocked out she has 0.6 hours left though uh, that's unfortunate so we're not gonna be able to get that she did drop her weapon though which is a pretty good weapon by the looks of it does quite a bit of damage and our spell thief could use that and emerald also dropped her weapon which has a really high value though is the only thing like both of them have pretty high value we'll probably just end up selling those weapons and yeah there goes our gear as far as this dude he is a dead eye class but doesn't like to shoot and okay, yeah, let's kill these turtles. Let's figure out what to do here with the rest of these guys. Four hours left on this dude, who is a Deadshot Chronomancer. Increases learning rate, so even though they don't have any passions for shooting, they could learn it fairly quick. But then again, do we want another caster that's going to be increasing our threat scale? Probably not for now. I think we'll hold off on that. I actually didn't see if Emerald is any good, by the way. She does not look especially good. Although she's a mage that specializes in base defense, so she is a caster. The greedy part of me is kind of curious to see what she can do, but the safe part of me is realizing that that we just doubled our map's wealth and we got to dump our wealth and that's more of an issue right now than anything so yeah we're just going to try to get rid of all this stuff basically right now and we're not going to worry about these guys before we sell off the revians gear and weapons i was looking over rim deed and they actually have some pretty good people that we could pick up like this fog heavy for some reason is very cheap i guess fog heavies have a really low market value of only 300 which i'm not sure why it's so low like they are incapable of doing some stuff and maybe they have low hp or something i don't know but this is actually kind of insane he's got 14 shooting and he's more likely to get an inspiration in it plus he's dead shot which lowers aiming time by 50 percent increased shooting accuracy and dexterous also lowers aiming time for only 141 that is very cheap and yeah we'll pick him up as well as i'm thinking about this demon prince who from what i remember have more hp on their body parts she is also tough which lowers incoming damage by 50 percent and she's a gladiator class so we're gonna have to increase our threat scale by 100 but she might be worth it for an extra melee tank and she's also got a burning patch for medical and can do art so she's not gonna be completely worthless around base also though from 
from what I remember, these demon princes cannot wear normal gear. Yeah, she can't wear it. So we're gonna have to find her special demon prince gear. This Fogman Heavy though can wear this marine gear and like all this excellent stuff. So I think we'll just load him up. This chitin plate armor as well. Gives 87% protection, very nice. And it looks like Fog Heavies cannot wear these boots and neither can our demon prince. So we'll probably just sell those off. And neither of them can wear this helmet by the looks of it. Yeah, so we'll just sell the helmet too. I was actually thinking about just giving it over to Toad because it doesn't weigh that much, but it's made out of really crap material tin. So for that value, it's really bad. We're definitely selling that as well as a lot of this other random crap to a hoarder trader that I called in for 500 silver. This Thorium Shredder actually really sucks. Thorium's not good for weapon material. It's mainly used for building, I think. And yeah, even though it's excellent, it is not worth that value. We will keep the Scrap Shredder though. It has a really good enchant, lowered cooldown and increased melee dodge. And the damage is good, especially for the value of only 2K. And yeah, that's gonna give us 4K silver. So this is kind of weird. The Fog Heavy decided to hunt this angler fish. I did not set him to hunts. He just is hunting like an animal. And as far as his diet, he will only eat raw meat or corpses, which is kind of interesting. Even though he is a savage that will literally just hunt wild animals and eat them raw, he does not like eating without a table though. Okay, I can see why these things have such low value. You have to feed them like every few minutes. Good lord. Okay, I'm not sure it's going to be worth to have this thing around the base. If he needs to eat that often, that's going to be pretty annoying, I would say. There are implants from what I remember though that make hunger rate pretty much zero, so maybe we can find one of those. Or maybe we can just feed it raiders. Day six's raid is by a 900 threat point scale raid. Crap, there's no way into the base. Oopsies. Well, there's no way to get the toad. We have to open this door. Also, the ammo mod's kind of glitching out, and I can't give the fog heavy any medieval ammo, so I don't know what we're gonna do about that. I might just end up kind of replacing the ammo mod with something else. But yeah, toad got hits just once in the arm, I guess, by the looks of it. These guys should be able to make their way in. I'm not sure why they're attacking this marble over here. Let's actually pull toad back a little bit. Let's let them get a bit closer because they have pretty long range weapons. And with those dudes hit the traps and then why are they behaving like that? There is a way in. Man, the embrasure. Yeah, toad just unload on them. I do have another embrasure over here that uh okay, it looks like some of them are running. And okay, they're all running actually. We're gonna have our gladiator team Mosses go search and destroy, which is basically a mod where you can just have them attack the closest thing that's in sight. And crap, they actually got hit, but their liver has a lot of HP. I think all this stuff on these demon princes has tons of HP and yeah, they do quite a bit of damage. Well, that was mainly thanks to the weapon, I think, more so than anything. Wait, you're attacking the person that's already down. Who's actually pretty good. It's a nomad class, but they don't like to fight. So yeah, we'll just let them die, I guess. Yeah, Team Mosses actually can grapple this person. So we'll do that. I should have that on autocast. It's a gladiator ability. What I like about Team Mosses' class is it's very simple. It doesn't have that many abilities. Not that that's like a requirement for me to like a mod or something, but it just makes it easier for me to, you know, explain things. And yeah, we'll have her finish off that dude all right where is it him actually yeah he got a couple injuries but like he's got a lower arm and an upper arm i guess both having 54 hp and normal arms have 20 i think or 30 i guess okay fog heavy got food poisoning from human meat and yeah i think we're just gonna sell off the fog heavy the dude's just non-stop eating and even though he's dead shot with dexterous which is a really good combo i don't think having him around the base is gonna be worse so we're just gonna dump him off to Rimdeed, which we'll do in a bit we currently don't have power but in the meantime we did get a bulk goods trader today and we're gonna sell off all the raiders gear there was something that was really high value from what i remember and yeah we're gonna actually sell off this excellent chitin plate armor that the fogman was wearing no one else can really wear it right now oh yeah this argotech mask a Shigaru helmet does not give that much protection for having such a high value. Architect mass is mainly for building and it's very beautiful, but it's not good for clothing. You know, let's just solve the rest of this crap. Oh, and they have a range shield belt. Let's actually buy that for Toad, as well as a backpack. This increases carrying capacity. I'm not sure if he can use both of these, but he cannot currently carry really anything. So yeah, let's pick that stuff up. And I also want to sell off all the kits and I want to try going back to Yeo's combat because yeah, there's a few things I don't like about this LTS ammunition mod. First of all, it is bugging right now with the medieval kits. I can't currently reload it for whatever reason. And another thing I don't like about LTS's ammunition compared to Yeo's combat is whenever you fire something that has a burst shot count of three, for example, it only consumes one ammo, which I think is kind of OP. One thing I like about Yeo's combat is that it actually takes into account each shot and it spends one ammo for each shot. The only thing I don't like about Yeo's combat is that it changes some other stuff when it comes to like armor and damage mitigation. So you do have to first adjust some settings before it's ready to play with. But yeah, the goal right now is to get rid of all the kits on the map and all the ammo on 
the map and then I'll try to remove the mod. People say never remove a mod mid save, but as long as you remove everything that's associated with the mod off your map, I think you're okay for a lot of mods. So I might have messed up really bad. On day seven, we're getting raided by the Empire. And yeah, we're at war with everyone on this playthrough. That was one of the settings. And crap, they're actually getting... Okay, I messed up again. Kinda, actually. Now I think about it, maybe it's a good thing that they're not coming in. Although, crap. Yeah, I think overall this is actually really bad. Uh, that wooden wall is gonna go down. And, oh nice, they dropped a shield. Which is not nice at all, that's very bad, actually. We're gonna have tow just... Holy crap. They have a charged sniper rifle. And up here, we're gonna have Timmy try to wall this off, while Timosis is gonna try to hold the line. With their gladiator ability. He's 1v4. Oh god, Timmy is, uh, yeah, this is bad, I think. Like, really bad. He does have cleave, though, I will say. Wait, did he just kill someone? He just killed two people, actually, I think. Timosis, you're a beast, man. Three dead? Holy crap. Toad's actually tanking shots, by the way. He just got hit in the torso, that's fine. Well, he wasn't actually shooting because I had him aim at someone. Okay, keep shooting. Timosis, keep doing your thing. He's got cleave, so that's partly helping. And crap, this person got past. We're gonna have Timmy just try to build this wall, and I had him just set to ignore. Oh god, wait, that person's dead. Perfect. Move this person and then build the wall. Then you move out, Timosis. Oh, wait, they're running. And the wall's built. Okay, that was perfect. Okay, that was a little bit too much. Uh, that could have easily just been game over. So, uh, yeah, let's set up traps next time. And Toad, get out of the way. Toad, you go heal. And okay, I'm pretty sure I've gathered all the kits together and we're gonna sell off all of these kits. Plus, well, pretty much everything. I actually bought a tackle box. Cause I think if we get someone that's good at animals, we can actually fish in our little swamp that we have in the middle of the base. And we'll sell off all these just random weapons. We can just buy some better ones. I don't know why this thing is such a high value. It's made with gleaming service leather, apparently a really decent material, but it was made into a whip, which does, I guess, pretty good damage. We'll still sell it though. And yeah, we'll sell most of this stuff, plus all the ammo. So after doing that transaction, our silver count now is pretty insane. And I'm kind of worried cause we're getting raided in two hours about an hour and a half maybe even like closer to one hour and the power is not kicking on we're not getting any wind and i want to do some transactions before we get raided so we can dump a lot of our silver we're just gonna make a portable wood fire generator for now and we actually don't have any wood okay go chop down a tree and yeah it's 5 a.m we're getting raided in one hour and there we go we got 500 watts of power the hoarder trader is still actually here and we butchered up a bunch of those humans for a ton of human leather got some thrumbo fur from butchering up a thrumkin there's actually a couple more on our map as well and do keep in mind this is going to boost our silver count but it's going to overall lower our wealth because like this human leather is worth 420 but we're only getting 322 silver for it so it's actually lowering our wealth so yeah that's another 3k silver now we gotta dump it i'm gonna try calling in exotic good traders they can have just random stuff that could help us out and yeah the main thing is i can do this all while pause for the most part like i have to call the trader then wait for a second then i can instantly repause and i ended up calling in five exotic good traders none of them had anything that we could use so i gave up on that and started calling in combat suppliers and this one actually has a crypto heavy armor that will slow ones bleeding and i think it makes it so they pretty much can't bleed out while giving a pretty good amount of protection and though it does weigh quite a bit timmy with his backpack now i think can use that and here we go i think i got a pretty good combo stuff to buy so this venomous rare infuser will increase toxic buildup of the target by 15 percent of the damage which can make it easier to knock people out and they also have this persona crypto heavy crossbow which can inflict hypothermia on people and that will also make them easier to knock out plus this thing does have a long warm-up but our death cap timmy does not care about this warm-up at all he just cares about cooldown and yeah this thing's pretty accurate at medium range not so accurate at short range of 12 cells so i don't know how good this is going to be in our small base area like maybe the pistol would be better although the accuracy at short is only 80 percent it's 95 at close but close is only three cells that's extremely close so the crypto heavy crossbow is just five percent less accurate at short range of 12 and then at 25 it's way more accurate also because these are persona weapons they have their own traits and this one has calm thoughts increase the mood of whoever it's bonded with and increases the psychic sensitivity by 40 percent which the second one does not affect market value just the calm thoughts one does so it increases it by 300. I think we'll go for the crypto heavy crossbow and that's actually going to be all of our silver for the most part. We can sell some random stuff that we got just lying around and we're going to buy a space ammo with the rest of our silver. Oh and also I'm just going to sell off salamander for another 129 so that will give us some more silver. I decided the dude's just not good enough like yeah he's a spell thief that can do melee and this race is pretty good but I got to be really careful with which casters we use and also his ideology is kind of annoying. He keeps trying to spread his ideology to anyone that goes in his prisoner cell because of this thing and I think it's harder to convert 
convert them over like I was trying and it was taking forever. And okay, so the raiders are here and they're sieging and crap, they're already firing. Please don't hit in the... Nice. Oh, that's still kind of bad actually. We're gonna have MJ and Timmy go try to put the fire out. Meanwhile, Toad down here is gonna try to snipe at these dudes. And yeah, they're fellow plant people, which actually might be pretty good for us. Um, do I keep calling him Timmy by the way? Pretty sure I just, oh nice, they're assaulting us. I thought there was the ability to carry someone, but I'm not seeing that here. You can rescue someone if they're injured, I guess, but you can't carry them if they're not. Well, there goes my plan of having Timosis carry Toad back. We're gonna have them just try to run. And one of them is a Killian, by the way. I think it's this guy. He moves very fast. Uh, maybe just don't run and gun, just run. Turn off run and gun, just run. And yeah, Timosis is ready just in case we need, I'm pretty sure it's this dude that's a Killian. Yeah, it is. It'd be nice to knock him actually. That'd be a really good dude to pick up. Okay, turn on running gun again, actually. We can knock this guy. Okay, Timosis, go try to melee him. Well, Toad just tries to uh, hit him so hard. 60 damage. We knocked him. He's going to bleed out in seven hours. I think it's actually worth it to go out and arrest him. And then maybe just try to hold the line here. Like, you already saw how beastly Timosis is. Uh, arrest him. Good lord, we're not hitting shots though, Toad. Come on. I mean, I think we're in the bad range for this weapon. Okay, maybe back off. I don't know what this person's doing. This is like their social plant person. I don't know what they're doing in general. Like, they're talking to the dude that's on the ground. This person's trying to fight. Okay. Uh, Toad, back off. Timmy, you need to back off as well. Everyone needs to back off a bit. Yeah, they do have casters. We gotta be careful for that. The reason why I risked it for this guy though is I think he might even be better than our Timosis dude. Just because he's a Killian, which boosts his stats tremendously. And anytime we can get one of these death caps that can fight, it's amazing because they have such high regen. And did we close the door? Yeah, we did. Nice. So they're in kind of, but they have to go. Oh, wait, they actually have no way in. I kind of messed that up. We're going to have Timmy um, try to repair this wall. Wait, maybe we could let them in down here. I'm going to have MJ come down here and open the, this wall down here. Oh, they're trying to get in from down here. Nice. So you got knocked. Oh, it looks like, wait, this guy got back up. This is the guy we just arrested, right? Cordyceps, he's the Achillian guy, and he's full health. Holy crap. Okay, so Achillian increases melee hit chance, movement speed by quite a bit, and he's good at melee, lowers aim time, which we don't care about that because they already have 0% aim time. He's industrious too though, which increases global work speed, and so does Achillian. He might actually be able to do work around the base. He does actually have 115% global work speed, which normally they only have 30, but he's getting massive boost to it. So he could actually technically do research, I guess. He has a burning passion for it, and he's bloodless, like it's really easy to manage his mood. That dude is amazing. Like that was a really good raid and yeah mj opened up the door let's hold this one open too just in case we need to and then how are they doing up there they haven't gotten through the wall up there looks like they're coming down here to try to breach let timosis be ready for the breach start melee attacking these things i guess even though they do give toxic buildup crap mj is about to get hit maybe they should be running soon i think although maybe they don't run maybe we shouldn't have let them in honestly like things were going pretty good without them having a way in let's have timosis try to run if we can oh crap this boat kind of sucks i'm not gonna lie like it's just not doing it and this is not great timosis can just hold the line i guess back here Good lord, Toad. How are you missing so many shots? 75% accuracy, I guess, is not good at this range, and things are burning. So we really gotta speed up this process. I do think his machine... Oh, it has full ammo. So, yeah, I did actually put back in uh, Yeo's combat, and that was very easy to do. All you gotta do is go to mod settings, go down to Yeo's combat 3 adopted, and then just use the ammunition system and then this, and leave this stuff on default, and then just turn off everything else, basically. Like, all this stuff, just turn it off, and you're good. And that's assuming you want to play without Yeo's special settings that he's chosen, which uh, I just assume that's the case for people. And yeah, this is their paladin, I'm assuming. Yeah, it is their paladin. I would like to take this guy out while they're all kind of preoccupied with doing other stuff. Uh, Toad pulled back a little bit. Hope we survive this. Like, I was originally thinking this would be a very easy raid, very like the Empire raid, but these guys are not wanting to run. Timosis has not taken much damage, but he has a toxic buildup, 39% actually. If that gets too high, he's gonna get knocked out. And they have weapons that increase toxic buildup, and then the death caps give it when they do melee. We need to kill this thing. Like, I don't know what's going on. There we go, they're running finally. Phew. It's good timing too. We could not have lasted much longer because our base is burning up. And we did get a potato by the way, who can cook over weights, does lower his global work speed. But overall, he can still work very fast, so it might be worth it just to arrest him. And we could have Toad actually just run them down and see if we can knock out anyone else because they might have some better people. Like this potatoid actually is about to go down, I think. He's got eight hours left. We did give him a permanent 
brain injury though. Oh, that's a really good potatoid there, a caster. Arcane conduit increased their mana regen, although they can't really do anything and they have fully an ego, so they don't like to do like mining and cooking. And eh, maybe we just kill them, I don't know. Not that big of a deal. Holy crap, our base is burning though, good lord. So we had everyone else put out the fire and Toad ran these guys down and we did end up knocking out this guy, Ayrshire, who is a good cook. And being that he's a potato, he works at 500%, so he's gonna be a really efficient cook. And yeah, he'll be joining us shortly. He does only have five resist, so he's really easy to recruit. Okay, before we get into the next day's raid, we do have a combat supplier who will buy all these death cap spears. We're just gonna sell those off. Full action rifle, sure. And then we got some other stuff. We buy all this tainted gear, which is odd. I remember combat suppliers being interested in this stuff. And they have a Shadowing power armor helmets increases pain shock threshold. That'd be really good for Toad because he doesn't bleed out, so we don't really want him to be on a pain shock. So we'll buy him that as well as we'll buy all their spacer ammo. And yeah, we had 3k silver that was just kind of lying around. I didn't see it because it was too far away from the trade beacon. But yeah, we're gonna have Toad put that on the helmet. Timosis couldn't put it on anyways, even if he wanted to. And alrighty, now is where the fun begins. We're getting sapper raiders, and there's three down here and a bunch to the northwest. We gotta go out and take them on before they get to our base, I think. And they are Thrombonians, which are pretty powerful, like extremely powerful. We're hitting a lot of shots on this guy, which is good. Nice, one killed already. The main thing I'm worried about is if they have the wrong caster. And we're hitting two shots in a row on this guy. Wow, this caster's a bombardier. We should go for this dude. Are we not green, but I think once the hypothermia, yeah, okay, green got back up instantly. Paladin is a nasty caster. We don't want to deal with that. As long as they don't have anything that's... Oh, Ares Wrath plus Hawkeye on this person. They're worth 10k, yeah. I made Thrombodians really high value. I don't think they are in the base mod. Like, I don't think they have any increased value in the base mod, which is crazy to me. But yeah, these guys are not charging, which is odd. It said they're approaching from multiple angles and they want to use sappers to tunnel... What the heck? They're fleeing already. They're going to steal what they can and leave. Okay, very nice. They actually got in to the southeast. They were doing a little bit of a diversion, I guess. Some diversionary tactics going down. This person is trying to carry out 1500 silver, but we might be able to cut them off. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to. We already made it back. It's good that no one got caught by that because, yeah, I was not paying attention. Those guys were, I thought, really far away, but I guess not. Purple twice, very nice. We want that silver, kind of. Oh, we knocked out purple. Are they good? Sylvanas is blessing. Increased plant work speed, harvest yield, tame trance, perfectionist as well. And I think Enchanter is actually pretty good at melee. We'll try to have Timosis go over and arrest her. Uh, Oh, we knocked her out again after she got back up again. Arrest? Oh, we arrested her. Sweet. I still know she's good enough just because she's going to have an extremely high value of 8,700 base. That's even with her being injured. It's probably going to be like 11k base value. And if you do the math on that, uh, it's overall going to increase our... Uh, I got knocked out. They are not that good with this person. They're getting off with our Venomous Rare Infuser, which I don't care about that too much. Well, I kind of want it. Oh. We knocked out white again. I want to go for this person. I want to get our infuser back. Nice hit. We could have Timos try to run them down. Yeah, we'll just do that. We'll have Timos try to run them down. Who is currently sprinting. I don't know if I've gone over that. Did I go over that earlier? I put two points in a sprint. And while he's sprinting, it increases his speed. But also increases his tired rate. So he needs to rest more. As for his other abilities though, it looked like Cleave was really powerful. And even without putting any points into it, he still does cleave to nearby units. It can also increase the efficiency of it. So it takes less stamina whenever he cleaves. I guess it costs stamina when he cleaves. It increase the chance for Cleave to double strike by 15% per level. So it can double hit. That's pretty cool. We should probably just max that. Get double attacks off. That'd be pretty good. Oh, can you uh, take this person out? Oh, we're getting hits. And we killed him. Nice. And we got our infuser back, which would not go on our crypto weapon for some reason. I was looking for a weapon that we could apply that enchant to, so I called in another combat supplier, and they have what is probably going to be a way better bow. This Persona Crypto Crossbow does less damage, but it has way less warm up and cooldown, and it's way more accurate at short range, 102% at short range, which is where we're mainly going to be firing range weapons at. And yeah, that's 3,900 though is the only thing. We do have some gear that we can sell though, and then some random weapons and other stuff that are lying around. And actually from that siege earlier, they brought us two of these reinforced barrels which have a value of 500 each they're used for mortars now i don't even think this is part of a mod either i think this is just like a new thing with the base game yeah they have a really high value plus they brought plague shrapnel shells and incendiaries and a ton of packaged survival meals that we don't really need if we sell all that stuff that's gonna be enough to easily be able to afford the bow which by the way is also usable with shields and they do have a riot shield which does only give 45 percent protection to pretty much everything that's not the head though like literally everything so maybe it would be a good combo it does lower accuracy slightly lower shooting accuracy by two but that's not that bad i think we should pick up the riot shield and then this silent rattling gun as well this is a skaven weapon and anytime you see a skaven weapon you probably want to
to buy it because yeah these things are pretty nuts we'll test this out in the next raid and what i like about it most is it does use primitive ammo which is very nice we're also gonna need a lot more spacer ammo because we now have two ranged crypto weapons but yeah that stuff got delivered and i'm thinking we may be buying that crypto crossbow to our new achillean death cap achillean doesn't give him any bonus to the shooting aside from lower aiming time but he does have seven shooting and so i think for now it's gonna be a really good weapon for him we don't have anyone else that can really use it and yeah this thing does have the painless trait so he cannot feel pain while using it so he won't get knocked out to pain shock he can get killed is the only thing so we do kind of got to be aware of that but yeah we're gonna bind that to him we'll have him equip the riot shield as a shield and he cannot wear that much stuff by the way that stuff actually is not wearing that much it's only 3.7 so we can have him put some gear on and since he's bloodless we can actually just give him tainted gear so let's give him some of the stuff that his friends were wearing like this flak gear which he was wearing too but we ended up selling it to that combat supplier because yeah he can wear tainted stuff so day 10's raid is here and we actually have to fight this on the field kind of because they do have two rocket launchers i believe and yeah one is on this dude r nelson we're gonna focus him like mainly nice hit already on samuel we already killed a dude who had a shield belt which is very okay another shield uh it's not shield belt but i don't know what it is that drops the shield and yeah, we're just gonna keep running. And okay, these guys are coming in, which is fine. I put an area back here, so everyone's gonna go to that. And uh, these guys are gonna try to pick off whoever we can. Is this guy the one with the rocket launcher? No, there's two dudes that have rocket launchers, but it looks like they are not out here right now. And okay, we knocked one of them. Just focus this guy, I guess. And yeah, meanwhile in here, these guys are gonna walk over some traps, so that's fine. And kill that dude, nice. I'm not sure how many of these guys we have to actually kill. Oh, this person's a caster by the looks of it. Or never mind. We got tased actually, yeah. Lower team losses of stats for only 20 seconds, so that's not too bad. These guys are all donezo, and now they're coming in. This person out here is Herculean, by the way. That's a god trait. I'm not sure if we want them because they are a coward. And they don't really like to do melee, and we cut off one of their arms, although their other arm is a bionic animal arm. Wolf Toad arrest and strip them, and meanwhile in our main area, I'm hoping they just die to the traps and they start running. That'd be ideal. And okay, they're running. Very nice. They're gonna keep walking over the traps. That's fine. We'll have Timosis come in here and mop up the last two, I guess it is, just. Oh, and then there was one. But yeah, as far as this dude over here, we could definitely save him. He has four hours left. And yeah, being that they're Herculean, they have a really high base value. We're just going to sell them off to RimD though, because we don't really need their stats. And with that silver, I called in a bulk goods trader, and they'll buy all this meat that we got from butchering up corpses. We got potatoes, I think, from butchering up potatoids as well, because we got potatoid peels from butchering up those guys. And we got devil strand from something. Maybe this is also from butchering up the plant race. I'm not sure, but that's a lot of devil strand. We'll sell all this stuff though. We got thrombonian leather and thrombo fur from the thrombonian race, but then we you just get straight thrombo fur from the thrumkins i think that's how it works like there's thrombonians and thrumkins it's kind of confusing but yeah and also buy just all this random garbage gear they had a jumpsuit which increases global work speed by 10 percent we'll give that to our new potatoid cook down here though they actually have a crypto shield which gives 95 percent sharp protection to the neck torso arms and hands this thing's way better than the riot shield we should definitely pick it up and now cordyceps is going to have a way better shield and i'm not sure who we give the other riot shield to maybe timosis although he can't use it with his scrap shredder and we don't really have a good one-hander so i'm not really sure who give it to so day 11's raid is here and i'm kind of bummed because i think they nerfed the blood moon events and i did just change it back to the default settings but i think that uh okay we're just kind of destroying our own walls which is fine i guess i do think that we're not going to get a blood moon on day 11 which is um yeah it is what it is we will eventually get the blood moon again though well, let's actually well, let's just keep using the rally gun i think it's fine um we will get a Blood Moon event again, hopefully on day 20-ish, so that will be in like the next episode, I guess. Um, I was going to end this episode off with, oh, uh, you have all the space ammo out here, Timosis. Um, yeah, Cordyceps cannot carry any space ammo right now. Their carrying capacity is very bad, although he is making his own backpack, and he's almost done with that. He was actually the only one that can make a backpack because he has a crafting skill of three, or four, I think, but you need three. Yeah, we're just gonna have our gladiators tear these guys up, and we need to kind of hold the line up here. Uh, this person's getting through. Grapple them, I guess. These guys should run soon, almost certainly. Stun them, nice. They resist the grapple, but they're still stunned. And let's uh, not let them in, actually. When I think about it, let's close this door. That door got closed. Uh, okay, Timosis, come over here and help out. Or, okay, they're going for Timosis, that's fine. Now I think about it, let's actually have Timosis come back here, uh, if we can. Whirlwind does a whirlwind of steel and death, let's do that towards this direction. 
And that was it. They saw the whirlwind and they're out. No, thank you. Okay, Tomosis can search and destroy. Is this person any good? Not really. Do we knock anyone else out? Knock this guy out. Who is not that good. And yeah, these are Hybers, not Fogmen. Oh, this person any good? Nah, these guys are desperately trying to get out. But um, yeah, I think we'll just let him get out actually. We have a lot of stuff to do. Tomosis is injured. And all right, yeah, I think that's where we're gonna end this episode. I did also wanna do a god raid. I tried doing that here, but the settings are just off like very bad. So yeah, we're just not gonna do the god raid till day 20. And then hopefully we'll be able to do the werewolf invasion on day 21. And yeah, that's what we do in the next episode. With that, I wanna thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.